everybody's story is different. Everybody's story is different. Like it is. Now, what you gotta think about with recruiting, though. These guys all played in these you know, great places, but they weren't competing against each other. I was kind of told them that you don't compete against the person across the street. You ain't competing against nobody Shelby. You're not competing against nobody Chris. You ain't competing against nobody King Mountain. You're competing against people across the country for a scholarship. So, uh, you know you get old when you sit down and look at that door and uh, <laughs> All right, so thank y'all for coming out, man. This is uh, Recruit Knowledge for Omar Porter, the podcast that I started in uh, 2017 when COVID hit, I kind of got away from it. And so uh, having conversations with and these three guys, different, I mean, like individuals, just on the phone, talking about sports, talking about college, but also talking about just life in general. And so we were having a conversation, and I was like, or it was me and Justin talking at one time, and I was like, Justin, no, we need to let people hear some of the stuff we talk about. We can't let them know everything we talk about. But some of the stuff we talk about for us, you know, recruiting, just, but even just life. You know, and Justin's like, man, let's do it. So now we just got Chris, Trey, and uh, Jayla Moore. Jayla's going to try to get here. His flight got a little messed up, so he's going to try to get here and close to the end if he can. But if not, he knows his flight he got him messed up. But um, we was like, man, we're just going to get together and have conversation about some of their experiences. You know, you guys got kids, some of you guys are playing right now, parents you got something that's gonna come up eventually. And just let them tell y'all about their experiences, like academics, whatever that is. So we're just gonna sit and have a conversation. Y'all got I got y'all mics. So introduce yourself, man. Let's go. Come on, talk to them. Introduce yourself, man. Justin Foster, uh, played at Clemson. Um, coming in high school, I was uh, no more player in North Carolina. Um, top one player in the country. Um, I dropped down to top 50 a couple times. Um, went to Clemson, um, was at Clemson for five years, um, played a national championship, um, went to two more um, playoffs and played in one another national championship. And, um, that's about it. That's kind of hard to follow up with. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I come out of high school, two-star recruit, didn't really have too many offers uh, starting off. Uh, by the way, my name is Chris Willis. I played at Appalachian State. Uh, grad transferred and played my last year at East Carolina University, grabbed my master's. Um, played a lot of bowl games, won a lot of games, won a lot of uh, rings and whatnot. So, you know, carrying on that tradition. Well, um, Trey Harbison here. Uh, I went to uh, Northern Illinois. Well, first I went to Virginia out of high school. Um, had a bad situation there, so I had to transfer to Northern Illinois. Played four years there. Grad transferred to Charlotte. Um, ended up having a little stay with the Cleveland Browns. So. Everything was cool, but hard to act. These two right here. So, hey, <laughs> these boys played in big games, national championships, big rings. I just, hey, did what I had to do on my end. <laughs> For sure. All right, so let me, let me, all right, so we start with that. What was your GPA coming out of high school? Or close to it? I said for around, it was sitting around like 14, 4.0 around right there. Okay. What was your GPA coming out of high school? Like a 3, 5, 3, 4, something. Okay. Like what was your GPA coming out of high school? 3, 8. Okay, so did y'all just hear this? Did y'all just we talk, we talk about football? But did y'all just hear this? Four, three, three, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's one of the biggest things, like, man, we're gonna get through this, but I'm gonna try to get through this thing. There's so much that we can tackle. But you just heard the GPA that they just said that they had. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have the academics first, you ain't gonna get to that level. The young people that's in here right now, if you don't work in that classroom just as much as you think you're working at on the field, you're not going to get there. I mean, if these guys played big time ball, you know what I'm saying? But the first thing they did, they held their business in the classroom. Does that make sense? Young people, I need y'all to get there. That is the main thing. You have to have that first. We push so much with sports that we forget about the academic side. And I know we're gonna talk about because we're gonna dig into some stuff. But I heard Richard Williams say that when he played, his, his grades were great in school, great in school. But his parents and everybody around him they reinforced sports and not just grades. So he always thought I had to do good with sports and not in the classroom. 
he still did good in class, but when he made straight A's and Dean, the Dean's missing all this, oh, that's cool. He read for 100 yards. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's what we do. That's what we do. We push that. But when you push them, they make the same, the good things in the classroom, not the same as we do on the field or on the court. Just make it sense. So we're gonna keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, so what made you guys stand out? And I got I'm a little different, I gotta watch out bro, you know what I'm saying, from Carol down with when did you know that you play college ball? Oh, when, when did you know, like, you know what, I might can do this. When did that hit? That's kind of like what really me. I mean, my freshman year, I quit football, so I didn't play no more uh, in the middle of the season. So the sophomore year was really yeah, cool. yeah, quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still mad about that. I'm still mad about that. I'm Facts. Uh, for me personally, it was going into the uh, sophomore summer and beginning of my junior year. Uh, I believe that's when I got my first, like, official offer. Um, for me, it was, um, it was the beginning of that drone game, sophomore year. Okay. Um, I got called out of class, and um, just for the North Carolina's head coach to be sitting in there with Coach, uh, coach Barnes, so that's when he gave me my first scholarship. That's when I was like, yeah, I can play. Yeah. So now, I'm going I'm to go to Trey for a second. So when Trey was in the ninth grade, and his daddy did the test school, Trey was in the ninth grade, this dude, I was coaching running back, this dude followed me around. Like, every time I move, oh. he moved with me. Like, want to know everything about this and that. And I haven't had to talk to Shaquan Lushu sometimes. Shaquan knew more than I did that time. <laughs> but Trey told me as a ninth grade, so if you remember this, as a ninth grade, he said, I want to be the best back to ever play in Cleveland County. He told me that as a freshman, am I right? He got right behind me and he was like, oh, I want to be the best to ever play in Cleveland County. All right, what's, what record you got in Cleveland County? Uh, all time leading. The what? <laughs> all time leading. Oh, okay, I'm just saying. Okay. Shout out to Mark Adams, though. He played one of my records. Yeah, that's for sure. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, and so, even with that, like, he set out to do something and did it. You know what I'm saying? In the classroom and on the field. Same, same thing with Justin. Justin, you know, he quit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, he, he had to, was it, was it Carolina on the Ray Allen check when the coach said something to you about basketball or football? Yeah, Carol, I would say Carolina. Carolina called and like, talked to him to coach, and he was like, how tall are you? I was like, I'm about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, so he was like, all right. He said, what position do you play? I said, center. He said, I want you to get online with the um, center that plays for Carolina. And then I said, yeah, I know. And he was like, yeah, that's the problem. He said, um, you're a point guard. You know, he was like, you, you, know, you don't know how tall you're going to grow. So he said, you know, football, you can, you can make it in football, but basketball, you know, it's going to be hard to make it. So that's kind of when it kind of get me in the face. And so, and now, I'm not saying choose one or other. That's not what he's saying. Because at that point, he had stopped doing one. You see what I'm saying? Like, he cut down, hey, I'm just going to do football, basketball. The coach was like, man, just leave the options over. And he ended up winning the national championship. I think that was a good choice, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with Chris. As watching Chris grow, I remember when it kind of happened overnight with him. When, was Georgia Southern the first one? Or was it Adam? Uh, it was actually neither. My first official offer was from Morehouse. Morehouse. It was from Morehouse. Uh, it was crazy. So I'm actually sitting with my uncle. He was having surgery at that point in time. Sitting in the hospital, get a call. Hey, Chris, want to offer you a first scholarship? I'm froze. Like, huh? Like, now is my chance to make it. Uh, following that, then it was Gardner Webb, then Georgia Southern came, and then App State came. Morehouse, man. Could have been Morehouse, man? Could have been. But you know, hey, life give you chips. Make sure you eat them all. <laughs> all right, all right. So, all right, let's talk about this. So you were, okay, so everybody in the recruiting process was different. Like, just like top rank at one point. Chris was kind of not as recruited as much. Trey was kind of like in the middle of there. Everybody's story is different. Everybody's story is different. Like, it, it, Everybody think they kid going to Clemson. Everybody think they kid going to Carolina. Everybody kid going to Florida State. Y'all, everybody kid ain't going there. 
Now, this is what you gotta think about with recruiting, though. These guys all played in these, you know, great places, but they weren't competing against each other. I always kind of told them that you don't compete against the person across the street. You ain't competing against nobody in Shelby. You're not competing against nobody in Chris. You ain't competing against nobody in Kings Mountain. You're competing against people across the country for a scholarship. So we need to get out of this with somebody doing across the street. What's somebody doing in this school right around here? You know, they have to compete, you know what I'm saying? This is in it. But it's somebody in Texas that mama, they live in a trailer. Mama ain't got no lights, he ain't got no water, and he giving his all. When you go against that person right there, are you going to beat him? Are you going to beat that person for a scholarship? Because that's how you got to approach it. Because you're not just competing against each other. And parents, we need to get that out of our heads too. Look at some other kids to see what they're doing. Leave that stuff alone. Comparison is a thief of joy. Remember that. Say that one time. Comparison is a thief of joy. That's good, Chris. Facts. That's good, Chris. Yeah. All right, so y'all all in college, freshman year. I got some phone calls from y'all boys too. The freshman years. <laughs> I'm like, y'all take this freshman uh, trade. Nah, freshman nah, year. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, because, because everybody, when you hear out of pants, you're going to hear, um, my kid going to be a star. Or, or out of the kid, yeah, I'm coming in, I'm starting, I'm starting, I'm starting, I'm starting. So, no, Chris, you start. Yeah, I'm starting with Chris. All right, so I have two quick stories about my freshman year. So, came in early over the summer, whatever. Came in, you know, I'm used to going to class, go to class, go to class. Of course, like, you go to class to get my education. So I end up being five minutes late to class. Uh, ironically, just the, the day that I'm late to this class, they have class checkers out. <laughs> so long story short, where it gets out, Chris is five minutes late to class. They don't know it's five minutes, they just know I'm late to class. So that Saturday, I had to wake up at 5.30 in the morning, had 200 yard pencil rolls, 100 up downs, and I think it was uh, 100, every 100, every five yards, we had to do 10 push-ups. I never missed a class after that, <laughs> never again. To this day, I still have like nightmares when my alarm goes off, so I have to get up, 50, I said five alarms just to make sure I'm on time for whatever I'm doing. Uh, and the second story of that is, so come in, uh, at this point we're in season, so we're going through fall camp actually. Um, I come in and I know I'm better than a guy who's above me. Um, I'm a freshman, not really thinking about it, but I know for a fact that I'm better than this sophomore that's uh, in front of me. Um, game time comes around, getting into season. Hey, Chris, we're going to redshirt you. What? Like, what sense does that make? I'm better than him. I know I'm better than him. Why am I being redshirted? Now, at that point in time, you know, emotions are going, like, why am I being redshirted? Uh, and for those who don't know, redshirt essentially means you're fresh year there, or at any point, really. Um, they want, you know, sit, they're going to sit you out that season. Um, Ultimately, set out that season, knew I was better than the guy, but in the long run, it was better for me because I was still undeveloped. Uh, that red shirt gave me an opportunity to play for five years, which ultimately uh, gave me an opportunity to get my master's. So thankful for it, um, but you, know, you don't always realize the plan that coaches see because you always think, oh, I'm better than this person. Why am I not playing? I deserve to be on the field. You don't always get what you deserve. Um, and that's a rude awakening for some people. So the earlier you know that, the better you know it. So. I guess I mean, I'm a college recruit and at Chris, I mean, I didn't like anybody to get past him. Um, and we got to Clemson, um, you know, it was 5.30 workout, I'm feeling it, I'm, I'm looking at who I'm against, I'm running faster than everybody, I'm looking more than everybody, I'm like, alright, I'm, like, I'm the starter, right? And we get out there, and I'm not the starter, I'm sitting there on the game, and I'm like, when the game is getting safe, and I'm like, right up side coach, like, hey, like, I'm ready, I'm ready. Like, I'm going out, he's looking in. And uh, he put me in the game, and like, I got in the game, and everything was so bad, so I was lost. Getting over, getting over, getting over. <laughs> I look at the offensive line, he's about 6'7", 340, and like, I see the ball, I'm going after him, he grabbed me, picked me up, and slammed me. And I told the coach, I said, it's all right, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. I said, I'll sit over here for a little bit. So then my freshman year, um, I played a little bit, just a couple games here and there, sophomore year, um, 
play a little bit more there. Played a couple big games, made some plays, and then it came down to my junior year. It was a battle. Uh, and the thing is, when you're in, when you're in there, there's other players coming in. There's five stars, four stars, three stars. They're always looking for more players to bring in. Well, I'm a four star coming in. There's two five stars coming in. They're already like, I don't think people understand, but when a five star comes in, they're expected to play immediately. It's almost like they're first round draft pick. And they're expected to play. And as a five star, most times they're faster, they're either bigger. Something is, something is like just crazy about it. And as Xavier Thomas, KJ Henry, they came in, and Xavier Thomas is expected to play. So the junior, we're going into fall camp, and I'm battling, 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 and I'm expecting to start because this is my time. I'm waiting. And these guys just got here, and it was a battle every single day at practice. And in the end, we shared reps for the beginning of the season, and I became a starter, started that whole year and played national championship. But that's kind of like my little wake up, is it started with Kent State, and then my junior year, that's when I started, started playing. You don't, you don't start right away. No. <laughs> Tell me. Y'all listen to this, right? Okay. What's up, Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, my story is a little different. Um, being the three-star, it was in out of high school, it was down to Virginia and Wake Forest. Um, ended up choosing Virginia because, you know, the coach, I had the camaraderie with him, and he wanted me to come in and play right away. So I graduated high school early thinking that it was best for me. You know what I mean? So I get to the school, and there's a whole other coaching staff there. You know what I mean? So, like, they never recruited me, don't know me from a can of paint. You know what I mean? So I get there, they want me to change positions, you know, gain 30 pounds, become a fullback, something I ain't never did before. Like, I'm used to carrying the ball, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> well, I look like blocking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, now I look like blocking, but uh, <laughs> anyway, so. <laughs> to yeah, trying to make your own better. But, uh, yeah, man, so um, end up transferring to Northern Illinois. So due to the uh, NCAA rules, I had to sit out the first year. So, um, that whole first year was just learning. So then after that first year of learning, it's my redshirt freshman year, come out training camp, blow, blow out my shoulder, you know what I mean? So when I come back for the first game ready to play, coach put the depth chart on the wall and walked out the room. I'm looking like, all right, let me see where I'm on the depth chart. Well, I was last <laughs> behind walk-ons. These boys ain't, these boys paying for school. It's free for me. I'm behind y'all, you know what I'm saying? So, Coach telling me, hey, you got to you gotta go run down on kickoff if you want to make the bus for the away games. Like, I wasn't about to make the bus. Whoa, 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 whoa. He said you had to, whoa, whoa, Paul. He said you had to win. He said you better learn how to go avoid kicks out on kickoff if you want to make the away game. So, special. So, you mean to tell me you was a highly ranked guy, you go to college, and they say, wait a minute, you need to be on special team? All-time lead in Russia. High whoa, school. Well, we can't get somebody to be on special team in high school? Man, look. <laughs> You better go run down on kickoff. You're going to have to be explaining to them girls in the dorms why you ain't at the game. Why you ain't at the game. I thought, you, I thought you played football. I thought you played football. Yeah. See, see, nah, like, I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah man. So, yeah, you got to come in and know your role and perfect your role. If you want to do what you want to do, you got to perfect step one in order to get to step five. That special team is real. 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 Talk about, talk about. So, obviously, I play defense in. I, I don't want to play defense in. I don't play nothing else. I want, that's the only thing I want to do. I want to play nothing else. So, as you come in as a freshman, they looking for people to stick on special teams. Because nobody wants to play special teams. Unless nobody. you get the ball. If you get the ball, you want to play special teams. But no one wants to play special teams at all. So, they just look and put you out there. So the way you make the bus is like you only travel with certain kind of people to away games and home games. Some teams only put so many people on the sideline. Some some teams don't allow you to be on the sideline for home games. You a scholarship player and like it's like oh yeah, watch it at home. It's like I'm on the team, but you watch it at home. But Clemson allows everybody, but some schools are different. Well, the way it works is so they're looking at the depth chart. They're getting ready for a game and see who's traveling. And it's like, okay, yeah, like he can, he can play in the game, but he can't play no special teams. Like, but, hey, the guy behind him, he can play in the end three special teams. Yeah, we're going to take that. We're going to use him. And then all of a sudden, if you're one of those guys, you don't want to even try to do special teams. You don't want to do anything. Like, they just cut you out. Like, unless you're a free athlete, like, you the guy. Like, unless you're the guy, like, they don't care. They just, I mean, there's more than you're replaceable at the end of the day. And they will replace you to put somebody that is more valuable in their eyes. And 
be honest, that most players that I see travel that don't even play positions are guys that can play any special team, they can play anywhere you put them, and that's how you make yourself valuable in my opinion. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, piggyback on that, for the little uh, stint I was in the NFL, man, I wish I had uh, took special teams seriously in high school, like at Chris, because I didn't play no special teams for four years. I don't think I played special teams ever. I get to college and you have to play special teams or you can't make the away games. You get to the league, you have to play special teams if you want to get paid. Like, there's people who's well, second, third, fourth rounders, they made a career on special teams, never played offense, never played defense in 10 years. They ran down on kickoff for 10 years and they, 600,000 a year, running down on kickoff. <laughs> hey, I'll run down on kickoff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, learn as much as you can, because the more you know, the more you know, and the more you can do, is the more you can do. So, all right, so how did y'all balance that? Like, so first of all, you got football. How did you balance school and football? So, so we're saying, and I know some of the older guys that just played, just playing down as well. When we tell y'all, when you go to school, when we try to tell you early, that's a job. When you play a sport in college, it is a job. Like, you ain't just like, oh, I no, 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 no. It's a job because you still got to get your last one stuff done. And you still got to go to practice, so it's a little different. So y'all talk about, I guess, the, the balance of it or, you know, how you, how you eventually approach it. Because, of course, it was, it was some adjustments that you got. The schedule. Tell me about the schedule. Ooh, schedule. All right, so... Fall camp, most people get to, uh, you know, whatever university fall camp for me personally was, you start at, oh, oh my fault, my fault. Y'all hear me now? Yeah, uh, so we handle that this. Uh, anyway, so uh, fall camp, wake up at 6.30, you don't leave till 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. Um, and that goes on for about, what, three weeks? About a month straight. About a month straight. <laughs> Yeah. So um, it's, it's not for play play. Um, it's going to fall camp. Your first fall camp will make you. Everybody think they hydrated. You see people on the sideline taking IVs because they <laughs> can't get right. Um, so that's the, that's the first part of it. But I think it's three aspects to um, the schedule and the balance of uh, college athletics, right? So you have athletics, you have academics, and then you have your social life. Um, I'm currently an academic advisor at Howard University. And one Hold of on, say that again. Whoa, 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 whoa. You said, you said that real, real fast. <laughs> Did y'all hear what you just said? Say it again. I'm an academic advisor at Howard University. Thank <laughs> you. Is that what y'all said? Thank you. The Mecca. Okay, the Mecca. The Mecca. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you get that right. People from A&T and Winston and stuff like a little different. But, you know, <laughs> it pings our pings for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and the reason I mention that is uh, simply because you realize uh, how many students don't really, everybody talks about high academic achievement, right? Or high athletic achievement, but there's a social aspect of, there, of that in there as well. And to remain healthy and really enjoy the college experience, it's cool to go to college and, you know, be an athlete or be a student, right? You'll be a student athlete, right? But you still have a social aspect of that. You want to make sure you can make friends. College is a place for you to uh, resources, right? People are resources. Make friends, make uh, connections. Like, be able to ask a friend, oh, I graduated college with this person, and say, oh, like, I can get a job from this person, right? Like, those are the type of connections and bonds you want to build. But ultimately, um, having a, a nice balance of those three things will have your, like, college experience the best at the end of it. Like, would y'all agree? All right, thanks. I mean, like, my biggest thing is, like, when I went to class, um, I made a research and science. Class, I sat down and there were no other football players in the classroom. It was just me. Like, I was the only football player, no other athletes at all, and it was considered a hard major. Um, and I had to make friends. And right now, with my career path and what I'm doing, like me talking to the people I went to school with, making friends, teachers, and all that, helps me on my career now. Um, I'm in the distance of like trucking and transportation, and like, I just reach out, like, I'll go to my phone and go, hey, I got this, I need trucks going here, they hit me up. And like, just making those connections, because there's a lot of people in those classes that didn't, like, some people just go to class and don't talk to nobody. Like, and making connections is what it's all about at the end of the day. Yeah, I, um, I agree. I feel like networking is the number one thing that's going to propel you in life, especially when you leave college. And when you first get to college, you don't even understand that, like, people see you as you're not normal. You know what I mean? Like, you're not, you're not like me. 
You know what I'm saying? You, you play football. You're the attraction of the school. You know what I'm saying? You got to really live like you are a living brand. You know what I'm saying? Like people know you as a brand. Mm. So like some people may want stuff from you. You can't even see that they want it from you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you just, you got to take that into account as well. All right, so now, once you, uh, yeah, more definitely. Go ahead. So like Chris is saying, like fall camp. So let's go to like in season, what the schedule would be like. So for at Clemson, most of the time you have workouts in the morning. You got to work out two or three times a week. So you got to wake up in the morning and lift start about six o'clock. They got three different groups. You get up, go to a lift group. Now, depending on your schedule, uh, if you got eight o'clock class, you have to get up at six a.m. to go work out. Uh, if you're older and stuff like that, you can come later in the day. But most of the time, the freshman, you get up um, six o'clock in the morning. Like you have to be there at six o'clock. Let me make sure I like. Be there at 6 o'clock, not wake up at 6 o'clock. So whatever your routine is, you have to be in there before they blow the whistle at 6 o'clock. Five there. Five Pretty much five Five Because all the people coach, some coaches walk in and you're like, I'm ready to go. Because it's on their watch. A lot of coaches say that and they are serious about that. Um, you get done working out, sometimes we get done working out at 7 30, class or at 8. They don't care. You gotta get to class somehow at 8 o'clock. You better be in there before that class checker. Class checker is it's a regular student that the, they hire, they sit there, they have a list, and they know who you are. They have a picture and everything. And they sit there, and when you walk in the classroom, they check. Now, some schools, they just sit there the whole time. If you walk out, they can check if you went to the bathroom, and they check when you go back in there the whole time. And sometimes they come after class. So when you're walking out of class, they check. So that's just a class checker. Um, so you gotta make it to class, and you never know what your schedule may be like. You might have classes back to back to back, or they might be spaced out. Um, you get done with class, most of the time we started football at 210. That was our team meeting every single day. Um, you had to be there at 210, unless you had a class at that time. So you might go to class at 145, you have to be there at 210. They don't care. Like, if you're late, they don't care. You're gonna be running after practice, or you're gonna run at 530 in the morning. So you get done with practice, when you're doing um, team meetings, you're doing your meetings and all that, practice weeks, you're going to feel about 320, 330 for stretching and all that. All right, you got a two-hour long practice, you get done with practice, you come in, you got to eat, do all that stuff. So you're looking like you're probably six, seven o'clock, you're tired, and then you still got school work. So like you went to class, but when you get the thing, it's like you never had any time in your day to do school work. So you get home, it's about six, seven, depending on what kind of practice you've had. And then you just don't know. Like sometimes I didn't get home until nine or so, and you still got work that's got to get done until the next day. So like that's just an in-season schedule, and that's like Monday, Monday through Friday, and it all depends on if you travel or not. Sometimes, and that, that's a whole other thing. If you're traveling, you're going to miss class, but they still expect you to make up that work, too. So. Sometimes you work when you travel? Yes, sometimes like, you got a project or something to do, and they don't care. Like some, some professionals don't care, some professionals do care, and they don't they want the work to be done. So like I've been I've been on the road like as soon as we land, I'm on my laptop on hot hot spot trying to get internet, <laughs> trying to submit something and like it's crazy because you might be going to a different time zone. You don't know, so you have to plan every little thing out. And the thankful thing that comes to me is like we had the app on our phone, Teamworks, a lot of schools have it, and they make the schedule for you. And then when you have breaks in between, you have to plug and play your social life or what you need to get done so you know what's, what's, what's your schedule like. So there's no excuse for you being late. There's no excuse saying, I didn't know, I didn't know I didn't have class. I didn't know we had practice at this time. I didn't know this was going to be going on. Like the schedule's on there for the whole year. So, I mean, it's kind of how you base it thing. So, if y'all y'all listen, this academics always give something constant that you hear, right? Like you talk about sports, but they still talk about studying while they're on trips or games. So once again, you have to have that part to be able to do what you got to do, right? All right. So now let's let's go into okay. We're going to the freshman year and stuff like that. Now you you a baller now, like you playing. Tell, tell me what was, tell, tell me about that, tell me the feeling and everything that went with that, and even the pressure, we talked about that, even the pressure from people, why you gotta live up to this expectation and stuff now. Let's, let's talk about that. 
when you start balling, everybody want to take you to the game. What? <laughs> <laughs> everybody. <laughs> yeah. Hold yeah. on, yeah. hold on. But did they want to take it before you was balling, or when you was red shirt, when you was chipped? Did they want to take it in? Nah. Everybody. Porter. Everyone. When you start balling, everybody want to come see you play. Uh, and one of the main things I really realized with that, you know, I've always had the policy, you let me know you want to come to a game, you come to a game. If you don't come to that game, you don't get another ticket. <laughs> like, um, you know, family, friends, whoever it may be. But that's one of the main things. Uh, even when I started balling, right, um, the key components of balling, the pressures with that, if you can have fun whenever, with whatever sport you're playing, you'll always ball out. Um, oh, hold on, hold on. Say it one more time. Could you say it one more time? I need to say it now. No matter what sport you're playing. No matter what sport you're playing. No matter what sport you're playing. <laughs> as long as you're having fun. As while long you're... as you're having fun. <laughs> you always ball out. You will always ball out. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and with that, right, so, like, you put the work in throughout the season, off season, in season, whatever it may be, but I didn't really start balling, as we call it, right, until I really realized, like, oh, I'm good at this. I can have fun while doing this. You know, I have people, it's like an enthusiasm you have when you really work with people who are having fun. You want to stay around that energy, right? Um, and being able to hold that consistently throughout the season, every game, knowing I'm going, to have, I'm going out here giving my all to have fun, those are my best games. I guess to piggyback off that, um, I, I guess y'all would agree that um, I guess being solid with yourself is like a big thing mm. because um, once you start balling, you know what I'm saying, everybody, you know what I'm saying, think highly of you and tell you how great you are, but <laughs> you don't know what you still need to improve on. You know what I'm saying? You you got, you got these games coming up, you shoot. You got you got these other boys trying to put you on their highlights. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you balling, you know what I'm saying? But if you ain't prepared, you boys you boys got to plan for you every week. You know what I'm saying? They want to they want to make a check out of you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you always got to just stay prepared and knowing that you got X amount of people watching at home on TV. Like you know what I'm saying? You can't go out there and embarrass your last name. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't embarrass yourself. So like. When you become a baller, you just gotta become more prepared. I feel like that's a that's a big thing that people lose lose sight of. I mean, for me, like same thing they're saying. Like my junior year is when it really hit for me. I mean, and beginning of the season started off slow, and so from there, I like, went to the national championship I mean, versus I mean, LSU. Played against Joe Burrow, finished the game. I don't know what you played. What you do to him? Bad picture guy. There it is, bro. All the time. That was your second, man. Come on, tell the folks you said, Joe Burrow. Come on. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this guy. This guy. I mean, it's just, it was, it was a lot. I mean, and sometimes parents, sometimes friends, sometimes family, like, they don't understand, like, sometimes you want somebody to call and check on you, but instead mm -hmm. they call a, like, Hey, are we good for the game? Like, okay, good. Like, wow. Like, I don't need that. Like, that's that's my thing. I don't need you calling to worry about me playing. Like, I, I got to do that. You can't go out there and play for me. Like, call and check on me and make sure like my my mental health good and all this because like at the end of the day, like you don't know what goes on when they're in there with the coaches and all that stuff. And there's so much more pressure when when you start playing when you start balling, especially when like you're the guy. And it don't matter what level you're on. Like, yes, I was at Clemson, but when you are the guy and the coach is looking at you and like you're the go to guy, you have to perform. And there's pressure on yourself, there's pressure from your family, there's pressure from everybody. But then, like, it's random people. You go out there and have a bad game, like, they will, like, embarrass you on social media. And, like, it's just like small things. Like, you get done with the game, you might, like, I had 200, 300 messages after the game. And it's either good messages, like, I appreciate that, but, or it's like, oh, I'm getting on social media and people roasting me because I missed this tackle or this or whatever. And like, that's a lot of pressure that parents, friends, family, they don't understand. And after the game, the first thing they run to you is like, oh, like, why'd you miss that? Why'd you do that? And it's like, I mean, I'm doing my best out there. I ain't go out there and just like not give my best. Like, I'm gonna go out there and other thing is like, you plan to get scholarship after. Like their goal is to embarrass you just like your goal is to embarrass them. 
I mean, and that pressure alone, like, it's pressure every single day uh, from everybody. And, like, you get enough pressure from the coaching staff. I mean, you walk in every single day and they own you about something, uh, especially in the season. Off season is a little bit different, but in season it's just a lot of pressure. But I personally would say friends and family put more pressure on them. Athletes more than they realize. And they don't realize it, but like in the reality of them calling and just nagging, 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 and like tickets, this, this, oh, hey, how do I do this? Like, like the kid at the end of the day just want to play ball and they just trying to do their best and they got a lot more pressure, but also you still got academics. You got all these other things that just keep lining up. So he might play good after the game, but he got a lot of stuff he got to deal with Sunday. Monday, all the rest of the day, we all the same, but that's just, that's just my two cents. Agree for sure. Like, if you, if you can reach out to checking them tickets, make sure you reach out. How you doing today? Like, hit, hit me up on Tuesday and asking the same question. Like, did you do anything? Like, just because I'm, I'm here, or, <clears throat> excuse me, just because I'm here or I'm away doesn't mean you can't check on me and still care about my well-being. The worst thing is to come to a game and ask somebody for tickets and knowing that you can get to a game after the game, you walk out there and they don't already. Good day. Hey, good job. Good to see you. How yeah, you man. I'm, yeah, man, it's getting late. Uh, it's a little cold out here. Uh, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. But ultimately, like, those are the, like, the small things like that, just saying, oh, let's take a picture after the game. You know, those are memories that I still have. You know, moms didn't miss a game, or grandma didn't miss a game, or like, you know, family and friends, like, from high school, still have pictures. Like, those are the main memories that you have with people, like, oh, hey, bro, look at, you know, seven years ago, we took this picture, or Snapchat memories popping up. Like, oh, remember we did this video, went out to eat after the game? Like, those are the memories we have, instead of just, like, it can sometimes feel like you're being used. Like, oh, I went to a Clemson game. Who'd you go for? Justin? Okay. Did you take a picture with him? Did you see him? Like, Nah, I had to get back down the road. It was getting... So you went for the game, you didn't go for Justin? No, they did want to go do this. I went to Clemson game. <laughs> let, me, let me post this on social media. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Oh, I know, I know Justin. He got me tickets oh, yeah, here. He got me tickets. Oh, he got me... I know Chris. I know Trey. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I know him. Did you speak to him? Nope. <laughs> did you check on him? Nope. Hey, man, that's, that's, that's real, though. Y'all listen to this. Like seriously, like, and it's, so, so take what they're saying. How old? Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Twenty-three. Now, twenty-three, twenty-four. Now, think about that for somebody that's twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen years old. That we do to our people, our kids now at an early age. Now they don't have all of that on them, but they have some of that on them. We put that pressure on them now. True, Think about it, now, and they, they're old enough to kind of process it and say it, but when th these younger kids, they don't, they don't know how to process and say that, they're just dealing with it. Do that make sense? Yes, sir. Like, that, that's, that's, that's like some of the realest stuff right there, though. Like, they hear y'all say that. You know, we were talking about that at the Garden Web yesterday, talking about, you know, pressure with. With, with, you know what people put on you when they see you at a certain level, but don't know everything that you go through. So, I know we can talk for days. What would you tell your high school self to help you with that level, or even after sports? What would you, what would you, what would you do different? Because a lot of y'all boys, y'all this stuff. These are good guys, they were good students. Like, so they were good students, but what would you do different? Honestly, I would tell my younger self, don't forget to have fun while playing. Mm. Because once you get to the point you have um, so much pressure on you at one time, you start to think it's, it's your job or like if it doesn't work out that you're a failure mm. or that like you're a loser or like everything you did was for no reason. Like at the end of the day, you have fun. That's what, that's what it's about <clears throat> at the end of the day. So that's what I would say. I agree with that. Um, kind of switching gears with that same question. I would tell my high school self, take dual enrollment classes if y'all not already doing it. Dual enrollment classes if you're not already doing it. Um, if you can go to college with 
60 credits from a respective university or college or community college, whatever it may be, um, you're, it, it's 120 credits to graduate. So if you go for four years, if you register at five, you can graduate in two, a semester and a half, what, a year and a half to two years and still have opportunities to get your master's, get another degree, whatever it may be. Um, but looking back, that's one of the things I really didn't realize that Cleveland County offers, uh, actually, so. Yeah, um, we offer that to CCC, guys, so. Uh, <laughs> Shameless plug. You guys are the one that's doing a little bit in Texas CCC class. But yeah, like real spill, general edge, learn a foreign language as well. Start early. Um, whew, man, I see it now. Like I have students coming in at 19 years old and they can graduate in a year and a half and be done. Like it's mind blowing to think at that age of 20, 21, you can be done with college. Um, but also, again, enjoy your experiences, uh, make memories, enjoy it and just continue to be yourself. Don't be easily influenced. Pretty much, I want to say performance to go to NFL. Uh, that's the that's the thing that everyone pushes. And uh, the reality of the situation is, like, you still got to do three years of college for you to go to NFL. Uh, a lot of people don't really look at that, but I mean, <laughs> come to high school, you still got to do three years of college. So, I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. And uh, my biggest thing is have fun. And at the end of the day, you just got to have fun. If you're not having fun, then you want to do it. Ain't no point stressing yourself out and dealing with all of it. You're not gonna have fun at the end of the day. And the biggest thing is a lot of people, uh, those guys that play in the NFL 15, 15 years, it's because they are very in love with the game. I love playing football, but I'm not in love with it. That's the difference in a lot of people. And I, it took a long time for me to realize that because I had a lot of pressure on back of going to the NFL and like, I never really did have fun all the time. Like, I was just like, it's just like business. Everything is business, it's a job, get this thing done. But then like the end of the day, when I look at it, like I was sitting down with Coach Sweeney, and he was like, I mean, if you're not, if, you, if you're not in love with the game, then ain't no point doing it. And I was like, I'm not in love with the game. Like, I love playing, but like, I can't see myself doing this for 10, 15 years. Wow. And the reality of it was like, all right, so why would I do this? It's for the money at the end of the day, but more money bring more problems at the end of the day. Um, and a lot of people like, I stepped away from football because of a lot of health issues and things like that. I still have a chance now if I wanted to go try out for teams and things like that. I turn it all down just because it don't make me happy. And the thing is, like a lot of people in the community, like the first thing I come back is like, oh, you're not, you're not going to leave, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. And I'm like, nah, like, that don't really make me happy. Like, that's not what I want to do. Like, and I would say, if I could go back to high school right now, I would tell any athlete, anybody, hey, what's your plan B? Like, the goal at the end of the day is your dream and follow your dreams. But in reality, like, not everybody can make the NFL, NBA, no. Like, like, that's just, let's just be realistic. Like, not everybody's making it home, like, a very slim chance. So be realistic with yourself. And you can tell if you have the potential to make it or not. But at the end of the day, for like parents, like the kid has to do it themselves. Like, like no, no matter how hard you push the kid, if they don't want to do it, they're not going to do it. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I mean, you can call me and tell me I need to do this, so work hard, go do all this. If I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. And I was just driven, like, <laughs> like, I was just driven, I was just like, I get up on my own, 5.30 in the morning, go work out, do whatever, I'm ready to go. Like, no parent pushed me and all that, like, that's just how it was, but at the end of the day, if you're not having fun doing it in high school, college, it ain't worth doing it in my opinion. Tag off of that, you are not a failure if you do not make it to the professional level. So, uh, 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 you are not a failure if you do not make it to the professional level. Uh, I think, again, those pressures of society, you know, whether it's community, parents, whoever it may be, uh, oftentimes we look at it like the highest level of success is professional level, and that's not the situation. Um, everybody doesn't have professional dreams going into college. I didn't, I didn't care for the league. I've always told part of that. Like, I had an opportunity to get my education. It's paid for, you know, thank the Lord for that. But ultimately, um, 
my path was a little bit different. I tore my Achilles in 2019, um, and that was my wake-up call to say, like, yo, coming off my junior year, we was talking about balling, right? Um, looking forward to the following season, tore my Achilles, and I realized you're replaceable as a student athlete, right? You get hurt, it's next man up regardless. You transfer, somebody else gonna play regardless. There's gonna be 11 men on that field whether you out there or not. Um, and like really realizing that, it helped me come to the conclusion of like, yeah, like you gotta take care of yourself first. And by taking care of myself, I found what I wanted to do, did what I had to do to get where I wanted to be. But again, I'm not, I've never looked at myself as a fair because I didn't want to go to the league or I, I didn't have a, a stock draft. Like, no, you did something that somebody else was sitting beside you probably couldn't do. Um, and ultimately, like, as long as you're fulfilling your self destiny or what you seem to be as happiness, keep doing it. I mean, like, think back on what you said, like, everybody knows, like, I work in cars, I do everything, and really do it. So what's your nickname, Uh, Mayor. His <laughs> 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 nickname is Mayor from Carl, so. <laughs> so, it's just right now, really quick. After my junior year, uh, that game, the uh, LSU game, my goal was, like, NFL, and that's gonna really get me. Like it didn't really get me freshman, sophomore year. I can get playing in NFL. Like after that game, I'm going to NFL. Um, obviously, COVID hit. I had some health problems and things like that. And then personally, I deal with a lot of like depression, like just being alone because, like in my head, like NFL was it. Like if I, like even knowing that I have all these other options, like what I can do. Like if I go to NFL, like it was like true. Like I really felt like I failed. Like and like that's just the mindset in society just puts all it on you, and people just pressure and pressure and pressure. And like I really thought like if I go to NFL, like, I failed. Like I, I failed everybody. And in reality, I feel like it was like not. Nah, it wasn't it at all. And like my thing was I had a plan B. And I would say to anybody going into school, like know what you want to do when all is done. Because at the end of the day, it's only one day, you don't know what it's on. You can be the number one player in the country and go to your ACL and you're needing right again. You can't run the 4-3 or whatever you run. And they don't care about you no more. And that's just the reality of the situation. Like, and it's a business at the end of the day. Like, y'all have to realize, like, college football is a business. Like, they have to make money. They don't make money. Like, the, like COVID really brought that out. Especially Clemson, like you see, like like it is a business. They are trying to make money, and that's what you have to realize that they don't care. And when going into the freshman, when I looked at my my guy in Tampa, he was like, "Hey, uh, what do you want to major in?" I said, "Engineering." He was like, "We had a long talk." He was like, "That's, that's interesting." And then he said, "Ah, uh, he had a little chart." He said, uh, "You major in these majors? You don't really have a plan. And if you get a random job, this is the salary you would make." I was like, "Huh?" He was like. 90 percent of football team majors that you see right here, you like, don't really have a job out there. They want to be a coach. Uh, they want to be a coach, or they want to be like a, they want to have those jobs like an NFL job. So they want to be a broadcaster. They want to be like those jobs are really rare. You can't just put in an application and like get a phone call. It ain't like you're going to get a regular job. And I was like, I mean, what do you think? He's like, you're not going to be a major in engineering. I'm like, huh? They told me I could. He said, well. You got engineering class at 5 30. Practice starts at 3 something. You still gonna be there. He said, so that's out the window. They can tell you whatever, but it ain't gonna work unless you're a walk on. I said, okay. So I made an instructor science and I looked at, I planned on what I wanted to do. Like, you might not know, but I already knew what I wanted to do and what kind of field I wanted to be in. So I lined my major up so whenever that day was, if it was 10 years in the league or if it was, if I never did play a college snap. I knew what I wanted to do, and that's where like the networking, that's where all this stuff ties in, because once you know what you really want to do, once you football's done, your career path, hey, like, when you're on, like, like Trey said, like, you're a celebrity, like, if you can talk to anybody, anybody, it's not hard to talk to anybody, they will talk to you about whatever, it's like, so you can sit down with CEOs of companies, you can sit down with all these different people, and I have so many people's numbers in my phone. It's like, oh, if I need something, I just reach out to them. But it's about those relationships at the end of the day and aligning yourself up. So if my end goal is for every athlete, I just tell them, like, you know, I always say, like, you know, dream big, but at the end of the day, like, be real with yourself about if you, the NFL, like, be
be real about NBA, NFL. Like, you got to be real and not what your parents want, not what your family want, not what everybody else wants. Be real, real with yourself. And you know, like, you actually know if you got a chance or not. If you can be real with yourself. But a lot of people can't. That's just not too simple. So, even with that, like, JJ, he's not here. He had a, the opportunity to, to, to experience that with a healthy injury mess the most trade. You kind of like, you, you got to be there. You got to be in summer camp and stuff like that. Can you like kind of speak on that? And even after that, with the injury, adjusting and it's like, you know, being able to do something else. So how, you know, how is that for you? Because like I say, you're one of the rare people that got to get there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now we know injury, you know, did it, but you got to get there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, um, it was cool. I mean, it was, uh, every, <laughs> you know, it was uh, everything I thought it was going to be. Um, I guess it's, it's kind of weird when you um, you think back and you're like, man, I, um, I seen Odell Beckham do this and that. When I was in ninth, 10th grade, and then you look up and go to me, is he sitting right beside you? You know what I'm saying? Like, how you, you got you to gotta know that you're, you're just as good and just as valuable as the person beside you. Like, don't ever belittle yourself to somebody else, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't ever compare yourself to somebody else. You always want to be the best version of yourself, you know what I'm saying? Because that will always propel you to do anything, to be real. But um, to, be, to go back on the question, though, um, to be in the NFL, man, it was, uh, it was different because everybody looks at you differently. Like, before I left, I was Trey. When I got there, I was Trey Arvison. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's weird, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, man, I'm still... You know what I'm saying? Same the, person. the kid from Chevy, I'm still the same person, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Chris and Justin know. So it's like, you know, it was everything was cool, but in terms of like the injury and everything, um, it was hard to, you know, you, you go to practice and then by the time practice is over they tell you you can't play no more. You know what I'm saying? Or like you can play again but you have to get a surgery that, you know, will you have mental deficiencies by, you know, in your fifties. So it's like you really gotta look yourself in the mirror and be like, Do I is this really worth it? Thank God, I, you know what I'm saying, I, I did finish school and I did get my degree and I did have good networking abilities and had good friends to, you know, to guide me along the way to get, you know, my, my mental health, mental health back the way it needs to be in order to be, you know, you know, where I, where I needed to be. But, you know, everything was, you know, so take nothing for granted. Like, you know, when you got into the end of like, now most people are like, oh man, you ain't gonna go back to the NFL. You ain't gonna try this. You ain't gonna try that. When I tell you, it's just, when I tell you that dude had a piece about it, and he was like, "Hey man, I'm good. I'm done." I mean, like seriously, he, am I? He, he was talking on the phone. He said, "Lord, I'm straight. Yeah, I'm um, good." Like yeah. most people was like, if, you know, outside of the game would have been like, "Well, man, you sure? Or you don't want to have surgery? Or you?" And I'm pretty sure you might have heard that. But when I tell you that dude had a piece about I'm fine. I'm good. I'm ready to go do something else. Same thing with Chris. When Chris got hurt, Chris was always, I remember Chris used to be on Chris like, man, you can go try for the NFL. Chris knew early on, like, no, I'm going to go do something different. Seriously. Like, what? Like, I think he had a remedy because he definitely did. But he always wanted to do something different. First of all, he was dabbling in his shoes, and I didn't get my shoes from him. <laughs> see, see what had happened was, uh, you know, that schedule we were talking about. That's that's what it was. But that's what it was. He was, he was, man, Chris was like shoe, like seriously. Before the shoe game took off, this dude was in that game early. Now how everybody doing shoes that this dude was doing this like five or six years. Am I telling a story? Five or six years ago, and that with Justin, I remember people used to ask about. Does he love the game of football? You remember that coach in Alabama? All these coaches, they love the way. Does he, does he love football? And we just don't know. And this thing is, like you said, he loves football, but he also loves doing other stuff. When you listen to all these dudes, it, it all goes to you have to be more than an athlete. Because what happens is we see it all the time, especially in Cleveland County, because we have guys that can play, they ball, they do this and that. But when they put all their identity in the sport, when they're done, they don't have them. They don't know who they are. Facts. Then they walk around here depressed. We've seen it over and over and over and over again. You got some of my guys from Gaston County. I know they see it. When you put your whole identity into a sport, and then when that sport is taken away from you, you don't have no identity in anything.
big deal. And so everybody that was going, yeah, let's go, let's go, on Friday night, then y'all were like, mm, he ain't a mountain devil. But y'all was pumping him up on Friday. Hometown hero. Pumping him, we're in Jersey. And I'll get Pastor Terry talking about this one talk about child stars. Y'all know the child star that we watched? Like, I, I always used to call him Carlton, for example. You know, he was the man at Home Alone. When he got older, he didn't know how to act. He, he peaked out when he was a kid because he was such a star. We do the same thing in sports. We put all that pressure. It's football, it's football, it's basketball, it's soccer, it's this, 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 this. Oh, you're a man. You're the man in elementary school. You're the man in middle school. You're the man in high school. If it don't work at the high school, you've been the man in that sport the whole time and now it don't work no more. What you the man in because now it's gone? What you the man in that because now it's gone? And the thing is, guess what? That is not their fault. It's the parents, it's the people in the community, it's the fans. That's our fault. That's our fault. That ain't their fault. They're doing what they love to do, but then we put that pressure with them. They talk about the whole time on them. They did what they did. Yeah, man, I knew he wasn't going. Man, shit, Joe. <laughs> but that's, is that not, that's frustrating, though. You know what I'm saying? We've heard them say that, oh, they talk about football, they talk about the name of but they heard constantly say pressure from outside, not allowing the kid to be a kid. And a lot of times that comes from grown folks like us. I probably, I, I, my hand up, I probably been a part of it too. But that's something that we gotta change. That, 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 somebody say something that's why I get No, no. That's real spill. Like, um, I think now we see a lot of parents, right? Everybody want to train their kids at the age of nine months. Like, <laughs> bro, like, let, <laughs> uh, there it is. Uh, up, down, come on, come back. <laughs> but real spill, like, you can't, at the end of the day, right? There's nothing wrong with wanting success for your kid. But when, you, when your child chooses to work out, over going to a birthday party at the age of seven? Mm. Is that really what the, the lifestyle you want? Because if that the athletic thing that they're working out for, right? If that doesn't work out for them, then what? They ain't got no friends to go to. Mm. They, they can't talk to Trey because they didn't go to his birthday party. They missed out on all the fun. Mm. Like, those are the type of things. Like, there's nothing wrong with wanting the best for your child, your you know friend, student, whatever it may be, but still give them the space to be people, right? They still need that those you know, that camaraderie you talked about, right? Like, your friends help you get through tough situations. When you get to college and your parents aren't there, your mentors aren't there, your, you know, coaches aren't there, you still gotta have people to depend on and have, being able to have friends and other people to talk to outside of your parent who wants to be a coach, who ain't never played the sport, but swear they got all the information. <laughs> like, that's where things start to get real rocky and people don't always understand that. My thing is, I want to learn how to put cars together, how to take motor car and all that. And I remember, like, adults be like, I'll be dirty when I go into a park or something. Why are, you, why are you doing that? You need to worry about football. Mm. And I'm just like, I'm yeah, cool, but I don't be doing that. <laughs> and, like, and that's the thing is, like, a lot of, like, especially, like, at Clemson, like, you see a lot of guys come back and you go, like, it's not even guys that don't go to the NFL. This guy's in the NFL with millions of dollars that are lost. Mm. Like, they come back looking for a coaching job because, like, they got $30 million in the bank, but they don't know what to do with it. Like, they don't have, like, they don't know what to do with it. They don't trust anybody to even let somebody else send them their money. They went, they just lost. And, like, it don't matter what level you at, where you make it to, like, you can make it to the NFL, make all the money, but some people are just still lost. Like, they don't, they don't know. Like, I see so many NFL guys come back and look for coaching jobs. But ain't, ain't, ain't too many coaching jobs. I mean, that's, that's a limited amount. I mean, and nobody, they're like, oh, I want to coach high school. I want to go, I want to coach in college. Well, there's a process in that to get a, to be a college coach. And, like, so at the end of the day, it's just like, I mean, I can go on and on and on and on about this. But, like, 
there's a lot of pressure from adults and they don't realize it to just let kids be kids. And it's gonna work out the way they want to. And then sooner or later, it's gotta click in the kids head. Like, like there was a time for me in high school where it clicked and I was like, I'm good at this. And if I wanna do this, like if I wanna go to college do this, or if I wanna dominate every Friday night, I can do that. But until it clicks in the kids head, like, it don't really matter to them. They're just trying to have fun and hang out with their friends. So like my personal opinion to like parents is like, when your kid, like, he starts doing stuff and starts training and, like, it clicks for him, like, don't force him to do stuff he don't want to do. Don't force him to play a sport. Like, offer it to him. If he don't want to play, I mean, it is what it is. And then my personal opinion is, like, let him be a kid. And when it clicks, like, keep him humble. Like, it's the biggest thing. Like, keep him humble, but make sure they're working on the plan B. Like, make sure you have another interest of what they like, not just football not just basketball, not just a sport, because at the end of the day, that job, like, NFL is a job at the end of the day. So, my other guy just arrived, Kevin Morris. Thank you for coming in. Let's see, Chris. Yeah. 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 From Orlando, I know we got back to the Rapids, that's going to be the one to come in, too. Um, man, if any of y'all got some questions that you've been asking? If you got one, yeah, uh, yeah, I was going to say a couple more things. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, sir. So, you guys talk about the check, the classroom check. That That's something like that goes on in corporate America, but they don't call it classroom check. Expound upon that, please. You want it? You say it. Huh? Classroom checker. So, uh, essentially, uh, you, you're expected to go to class, right? Because you're there to get your education. Uh, so when you lack and you're, you're not going to class, you start to have repercussions for that due to you not doing your part, right? So now that's when your repercussions come in of, oh, well, you got to run. JJ, remember, Mike, how many times, you know what I'm saying, absent to a class if you want to, like, it's not a good, not a good time, so. I guess that transferred into, like, corporate America because, I mean, football, you can be late as many times as you want to be on the run you're going to do some punishment for it, but I guess you transfer it to the workplace. Like, it's nothing for me to get up and be 30 minutes to wherever I got to do. If it's a meeting with someone, work, wherever it is, it's nothing for me to be early because it's been training me like, oh, it's like, you got to be there early anyway. Like, it's nothing to get up early out of bed and be like, all right, let's just knock this out first and so on. Like, so I think it just transferred into, like, the workplace in general because, like, if you wait for something, like, being early and being on time is, like, a lot of respect. Like, I've had a lot of meetings where somebody shows up late, I don't want to deal with them. Like, you can't respect my time and what I have to offer and give you, then, like, I'm not, I'm not dealing with you. So I guess that kind of answers the question when it goes into the like, corporate America and workplace. Like, the people I deal with, I mean, you got a meeting and you're meeting with a CEO of a business, he got better things to do than come talk to you, but he's taking time out of his day. So just being on time, being prepared, and... That's just, that's just kind of how it correlates. So, I mean, you late for your job, and I don't know how many times we we'll give you, but hey, it ain't gonna be too many. I mean, um, shoot, I feel like it teaches you discipline and sacrifice, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes to be real, discipline will take you further than your talent can, to be real. All right, so, so real fast, you heard the other three. Let me get this guy right here real fast and let him say something really quick. So this guy, okay, so he was the guy that the, the highly recruited, kind of recruited in between the high and kind of to the guy that wouldn't have recruited and then went on the app and got no record books. Can you talk about like, man, just your process of, because I know it, but just real fast, like, man, I don't know, because he, we went places and folks wasn't fighting him, man. Don't let you tell me real fast. Well, first of all, I want to try to now still make my talk, my talk. Okay, okay. You know, I said that every time, you know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my 40 time was so first of all, <laughs> you know, just to keep it real, you know, uh, but it was, it was just other areas I do, you know, you know uh, coming in, that was, that was one of the most important things, you know, every count, they say your, your 40 time, your grade, all that, but, I feel like what I did, I, I figured out what I was best at, you know, and I maximized those abilities. You know, I wasn't the fastest, 
I wasn't big, you know, I wasn't strong, I, I was fast, fast strong, but I wasn't strong, and, uh, you know, uh, I was never a starter on no team, you know, to, to, to start out. You know, I never, I never was just that, that one guy to go to. You know, yeah, you know, trade, you know, I, I had it. It's, it's like I always got to shut them off. Which is cool, it, it, it teaches you a lot about, you know, the game. And, you know, I, I, as, as everybody here knows, people ask me, the game teaches a lot about life. You know what I'm saying? Or patience, or, uh, you know, togetherness, leadership. And, you know, now that, you know, we get old and business and everything, you can't make money without having somebody else make money. You can't chase your dreams without helping somebody else. You ain't never helped somebody else chase their dreams. So it's, it's like, it's all connected in a way. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, but you know, it's just like, the further you go in life, you know, it, it's just like all the dots connect. Like, okay, that, that happened for a reason. That thing do happen for a reason. Like, I see why this happened. I remember I was like, you be mad at that. But now, you know what I'm saying, it don't mean nothing to me. Because, you know, it's just, it's just, but uh, to get back to it, not how to do it, um, you know, how, how far you went into it already. Uh, didn't have an offer until, I didn't have not one offer until like, I'd say the last week of the time day. You know, so, uh, and then it, it, just with, with all the hard work and stuff, you know, you put in, you get to that point, you know how the obstacles you overcome, you just feel like, well, I felt like personally, at that time, like everything was kind of for no reason. And then with me being who I was, come from where I came from, that was like the only thing I had. So it's like, what else, what else I'm gonna do? And I put my whole life and all my time and everything to this. And ain't nobody seeing my work. Ain't nobody seeing my work that I put in. They ain't seeing, you know, they ain't really seeing it. But, you know, Porter, he taking us to camps every weekend. I'm out there, you know, grinding, busting. But nobody, you know, they still want to bite. Nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. So, you know, it just went out. It came all the way down to the last week, like I said. And I never stopped. I never, you know what I'm saying, got complacent. One year, well, not one, not, not one time did I ever think my dream was gonna come true. I don't know how, oh, yeah. I don't know oh, yeah. what exactly, you know, what was it was just the energy or what, but not one time did I think I didn't think I was gonna go to be, I was gonna be, you know, one of the greatest kids around. But I was gonna, whatever school I went to, I was gonna set records. You know, Coach Barnes told me, you know, act. As soon as soon as I got off me, because I was committed to Southern University, bad rules. And, you know, Lord knows I didn't need to be down there, but <laughs> it was, uh, I committed because it, it I went down there at the time, you know, had my official visit, and it was just like everything to me. And I've never been outside the ship too many times, you know. I moved around for gas and stuff like that, but that ain't really nothing. So once you go to another state, you know, it's, you know, you take no business, you know, everything just... This is new go crazy. I, I feel on the first day, you know, I'm going here. And um, I brought my homeboy Woody with me. Uh, I'm like, hey, y'all get my boy here too. You know what I'm saying? So he ended up, he was like calling him Woody too and everything. So uh, on my way back, long story short, on my way back home, I had call him. You know, he, he put in a good word for me. You know, like I said, he take me to all the houses and everything. He put in a good word for me. And we finally get to the last week. And on my way back, I just committed. On my way back, uh, Al called me, Coach Foster called me, like, hey man, we got a kid. He don't, he don't commit. No, he told me this the night, the night before. We got a kid. If he don't commit, we're gonna leave it off. You know what I'm saying? So I'm praying, I'm praying. I'm praying. This, you know, this this be time ball. This L, L, B, you know what I'm saying? This is real. This ain't, you know, Division Two. I get to play against Bama Pride. I get to go against Jordan. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, my family gonna see the whole city gonna see me. And that's all I ever wanted was like to just show the whole world, be be on the platform where I can show the whole world all the work I put in. You know what I'm saying? So, man, they they offered me. You know what I'm saying? I'm crying like a baby. And, 
Yo got one song to say. You got a slogan. You're proud of you. You're second, third string. Starting out, you got to prove yourself. You got an out. It's going to be like five, six more of boys just like that. What you going to do? I said, Coach, I'm going to out. I ain't going to I said, I can't. I don't want to be nowhere where I know I'm better than them. I want to go somewhere where they, they, they don't think, you know, they don't sleep on me. Because this, this is where I came from. I always want to like prove myself. I want to prove to myself that I was never wrong by following my dreams. I was never wrong by making this decision, by picking this better school. I was never wrong about going to overcome this bigger option. You know, I was never wrong about taking the easy road beating out two or three dudes. You know what I'm saying? And I know, hey, yes, I, I want to take out these dudes who got other SEC, ACC offers. You know what I'm saying? Tell them about Gold, Chevy, North Carolina. Tell them about, you know what I'm saying? So, that, that was just everything, you know. And then, you know, bam, he came up, took a visit. I had to bring him in, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he was about to be a robber. He was going to be hit going in. Grand spin. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, man, that over, that over raw process, man, it just, it just puts something, you know what I'm saying, throughout life. Like, just don't never give up. And I, I know that it sound, you know, everybody say don't never give up. When you really truly see the song for the first time in your life, and don't give up, you see it actually come, come to life. And it's like you live, it's like you walk outside, it's brighter than you've ever seen it before, you know what I'm saying? Like, the world is opened up to you. Like, I can really do this. I can really go here. I can really, you know, before I start playing college football, I never been on a plane. Ever since that, I, I can't stay off the plane. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's surreal, man. And it's, it's, it's just so much stuff out here in this world that people don't really know that's waiting on. Because they, they, they jump, they, they, they jump in too many lanes. You know what I'm saying? You stay in your one lane. That's gonna take you, that's gonna take you to Cali. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's just what I got to say on that. So, 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 you one of the few that got the experience to the NFL, you know, the injury, you know, got you. Can you speak on that real fast? And I think it's the same thing with him. Once everything settled with him, he had a piece about coming out. He had a piece out of it before he even going to the league, right? You know what I'm saying? What we kind of talked about, I don't, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But can you speak on that? Because like, so you, you were with the Jets, you was in the facilities doing that, and real briefly, you know what I'm saying, about that? Um, just the whole process about it being in the Jets. Um, you know, as y'all know, got to the Jets, well, I got here for senior season. You know, uh, I mean, it was real tough. He scored a touchdown. What did you break? What you break? So he broke all this. I'm just part right there. He still scored the touchdown after he broke it, and that was the last time he ran the football. Who's y'all playing? Arkansas. Who's that? Arkansas. Who's Lafayette? Lafayette. Lafayette. Seriously, he's going. He breaks it. It breaks, and he still stretches to the end zone to score the touchdown. He still stretched out the score, the touchdown. That was the last time he ran the ball. Because I, I knew that might be my last time I ran the ball. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> and, wow. Like, I don't know, it was like, it, I ain't never really experienced. I never broke it in my life, so it, it was all a little experience, but I never, you know. It was just everything happened so fast, like 0.5 seconds, you know, and uh, like I said, I, I was just doing me, man, running it hard, and dudes up on my back, I don't know if y'all see it, it was empty, man, but uh, you know, it was, just, it was just one of them crazy, one of them injuries you see on TV, and he's just like, man, how you doing? Like, man, I don't know. I can't remember what he gonna do with the one you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, this is whole career might be over, you know, but um that that moment, it was it was like a reset, you know what I'm saying? Like I was saying the all the hard work I put in, it seemed like nobody was watching. 
it was like, God helped me get all the way to the top. But he let me know, like, you know what I'm saying, it, it can be done. Like, you know what I'm saying, no, you came for the Father, you were humble, the whole way you got to the top. Don't get up here, you know, and I just start to eat. You know, what come with it. And you, you, you kind of lead away from who you really are. And I feel like that's exactly where I was going. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. You know, it, 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 being, being the best player on, on your team or you know, at your school, <laughs> it, it's going a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody know JJ. Go to App State. Say that. Say Jalen Moore, App State. <laughs> 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 I feel like in, in a way, you know, you can always look at it. I, I, of course, I'm, I'm in a lot of crime, man. Like, man, I, I just made it to, you know what I'm saying, to where I want to be, you know, at the Penn State game. I'm, I'm in the top 100 now. They, they talk about I'm, I'm, I can go third round. You know what I'm saying? So, and all that was like a dream. And I could have went, I could have left the year before, you know, and went later around. But, like I said, I'm like, I want it all. Like, I ain't trying to go split round, sit around this year. I'm trying to go first round next year. So that's what I did. And I, when I came back, I ain't gonna lie, I had it on my mind, man. I'm like, dang, I, what if I just left some money on the table? You know what I'm saying? I go back to college to get hurt. And I feel like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know who was just talking, talking to me. I don't, know what it, I don't know what it was, but I just kept, you know, doing my thing. That game, you know, it happened. Like I said, I feel like it, it just reset. Like, I'm back in square one, you know, all the coaches and everything. You know, that everybody got to move on. The agents, and, you know, all the calls slowing down. And it just puts you back in that, like, I had to be now. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot back in with myself. I'm talking about, like, three days later, I'm, I'm already in, in the back of the weight room, you know what I'm saying? Doing what I can do on one foot. You know what I'm saying? From that, from that day forward, you know what I'm saying? I cried like a whole two days. Cause you know, I had a daughter at the time. I didn't have my, you know, daughter. And my family already, you know what I'm saying? Started, you know how it is to from shit, man. Y'all, you don't really see nobody take it so far. So once you get to that point, and it's been like, oh, he out of here. He gone. Once you see, you know what I'm saying? Somebody you used to be in class with, and your, your cousin, your son, on TV scoring against, Top five red team, like, oh, yeah, he, he out of here. Like, that's the same thing I'm running in spikes. You know what I'm saying? You see Brandon Spikes out there on TV against red team, like, oh, yeah, he's gone. So I feel like I was kind of leading in that direction. A lot of people gravitate towards that success, and I was leading into it. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it was getting me, like, I'm like, yo, yeah, I am, I am going, I am out of here. You know what I'm saying? It's just supposed to think, you know what I'm saying? The, the confidence and all the hard work you don't put into it. But, Man, I said it to say, it's just that, that whole process put me back to square one, man. And, I, and since that day, like it just let me know every, anything you take away from it. You know what I'm saying? But the same way you got it, you can get it again. You just probably got to go two times harder. You might lose again, but you got to go three times harder. You know what I'm saying? You might never be the same. It, it, some might be amputated or, you know what I'm saying? Any, anything, you can lose it, man. Like I said, I, 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 I took that all the way to the combine. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't do nothing but bench press. I couldn't even stand up all the way. I tried to, you know, be number one in bench press. I threw that thing on 27 times. For real, bro. The whole training session, like, I'm just training on straight bench, bench, bench. So I'm like, man, if I'm, this is all I'm doing. I'm about to do it. I, I got to get the top spot. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that, that whole process taught me a lot, man. Anybody who out there, you know what I'm saying, going through it, that, that's, that's, that's the game. You're going to go through physical injuries, mental, like mental, that, that's, that's bigger than physical. Something like that. Yeah, 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 mental everything, man. So that's, yeah, that, that, that's about it. So. Yeah. All right, so, so can y'all give it up for these guys, man? Um, I'll just leave you with it, man. It's a million of yous in the world, man. You know what I'm saying?
know what I'm saying? What's gonna make you different from the other 999,000 Tater Huskies? You know what I'm saying? What's, you know what I'm saying? What's, what, what's gonna make you different? That's why when I was out there with y'all boys, man, like I was pushing y'all so hard, cause like, what's gonna make you different than that running back in California or that running back in Wyoming? You know what I'm saying? That ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? They wanna make it out for their for their family and everything too. So like. You know what I'm saying? Just stay grounded, man, and just know who you are and go get everything, man. The world is yours for real, to be honest. I say stay true to yourself. Um, you know, you're going to get tested, whether it be mentally, physically, from family, friends, the outside pressures we all talked about. But as long as you know who you are within yourself, and stay true to it and be a good person. Like, ain't, ain't ever heard nobody be a good person. So yeah. it goes a long way. I say like, you just have fun. Your schedule set out for you to be great. 
They make you wake up. You know if you don't wake up. You know if you don't do this. You know if you don't score this touchdown. You know if you fall. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You know in these things. But when you get out here in the real world, you ain't got nobody telling you what to do. You ain't got nobody. It's like you were working, you ain't no boss. You know what I'm saying? When you got a job, your boss telling you. And you know you gotta be at work with your day is day. You know you can't take no vacation leave. You know what I'm saying? You know you can't call out today. Like I just told my mom, my daughter like, yesterday, I don't know if I do it today, I'm gonna fire. When you are when you are an entrepreneur, you set your own schedule. You you got your own, you gotta get your work. You gotta teach your workers how to work. And if, if you fail them, your business fails. And that's that's the same thing with life, like. Once I got off of somebody else's schedule and I got back on my own life, it showed what, what I really was living for. What I really was trying to put my energy to. You know what I'm saying? Without football on my And I had to learn that I, I wasn't I wasn't too much. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You just gotta you gotta find yourself in outside of football, outside of running ball, outside of, you know what I'm saying? Rap outside where everybody else been cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's been so much stuff. I done, I done tried down in everything, man. Like, cause, cause for real, once I woke up, I'm like, this ain't what I want. This ain't where I want to be. You know what I'm saying? I done bread dogs, you know what I'm saying? Doing landscapes, bumming across, you know, real estate. Once I actually ran that up and got me a little stuff, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, I tried. He said that real fast. Now, when you ever, you know, I get real estate and you move on real fast, he got all pro properties. That's, that's, yeah. his, that's, that's his business. That's his business. Yeah. 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 Appreciate it. Yeah, um, it, it, it's, it's just, man, it, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't want y'all to feel like y'all got to be on that, that same agenda, man. I don't want you to just look at your own boy looking at what he's doing and making you feel like you ain't doing enough or I need to do this, I need to do it. Nah, y'all can, can do different stuff to piece it together, build an empire. You know what I'm saying? Or you can go off and create an NFT or something. You, you put your headset on, you have NFT. Ain't nothing wrong with this. You got people out here making NFTs, making five days. You know what I'm saying? With the love, the IQ you got it wrong. You know what I'm saying? For real, so Crypto, all that, like, expand your mind, man. There's so much stuff out here, so much money out here. You ain't gotta break your bones and do all that shit. Now, now, I'm not telling y'all, don't, don't, don't go to practice, like, man, I'm tired, I'm like, man, I, I already go to AMT. Like, don't do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Finish what you started, you know what I'm saying? Put that grind in, still chase that dream, but just know if that don't work. I'm more than just this. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just no million, million dollar football player. I'm a million dollar. I'm, I'm that dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm more than just, just running the ball and just uh, coaching. Or, or, it ain't got to be sports player. I, I just hate the fact You know what I'm saying? We label ourselves around sports so much. Which ain't nothing. You know, it's a guy here, a billion. You know, we can do it easy. But you know what I'm saying? It's all about finding stuff that, that don't come so easy. Cause that might be what's for you. And y'all give it up for these guys.